Today we're going to take a look at the present perfect tense in German using specifically weak verbs. Other presentations uh, will show how to form the present perfect tense using irregular and strong verbs, but today we're going to be looking just at weak verbs. So as usual, we're going to begin the lecture with, a, with an example of the present perfect tense in English, followed up by uh, that same example translated into German. Uh, after looking at those two examples, we're going to look at how to form the past participle. Uh, the past participle, as we'll see, is a, an important part of the present perfect tense, and knowing how to form it is, is going to be essential. We'll look at regular weak verb, how to form the past participle of a regular weak verb, uh, forming the past participles of verbs that end in a T, a D, or a, a consonant cluster, uh, for example, like a, a GN, or, uh, and also verbs that end in ihren, like fotografieren, or diskutieren, or spazieren. So, um, and then finally, we're going to take a look at the auxiliary verbs, or helping verbs, of sein and haben. When do we use these in conjunction with the past participle to form the present perfect tense? So what is the present perfect tense? Uh, let's take a look first, however, at the present tense in English. I hear the man. We have subject verb agreement. Uh, the subject, first person singular personal pronoun I, and I hear, uh, first person singular present tense form of the verb. Um, it reports on an action that's happening now in the present moment. However, uh, we can t make a present perfect tense by uh, changing here to the past participle heard and having a first person singular present auxiliary verb or helping verb uh, have. So what's important is the present perfect tense is essentially a, a two verb construction. We have the past participle and we have a helping verb. Uh, which is some form of, in English, to have. We'll see in a second that, uh, well actually, uh, we'll see in a second that German uh, forms the present perfect tense in essentially the same way. So when, what does the present perfect tense actually do? It's, if we think of it, sort of a continuum between the present moment and events that happened in the past. Uh, the present perfect tense is sort of one step into the past. Um, other tenses, like the, the past perfect tense, uh, which we'll examine at a, in another uh, presentation at, at, at a future date, it will be two steps into the past. But the present perfect tense is something that happened in the, happens in the past, has happened in the past, and the action has been completed. It's done, or as the name suggests, it's been perfected. It's, um, and uh, it's, the action doesn't really, I guess, continue over into the present moment. So uh, let's take a look at now in German. Uh, ich höre den Mann. I hear the man. We have, again, a first person singular present tense form of the verb, hören. And we have subject verb agreement between the first person singular personal pronoun, ich. Now, how do we form the present perfect tense in German? It's going to be slightly different. We're still going to have a two-verb uh, two uh, construction, but we're going to uh, take höre out of the sentence, and we're going to replace it with the first-person singular present helping verb, habe. Now, höre is going to go at the end of the sentence, but we're going to change it into its past participle form. So, hören goes to gehört. And that leaves us again with a two-verb uh, pattern of con or, or construction here. We have the first-person singular present helping verb, habe, and at the very end of the sentence we have the past participle of the verb, hören, which is gehört. So um, this, essentially, this right here forms the classic 
uh, sentence bracket structure in German where we have a verb in the second position and we have some verb at, at the very end. You'll see this in modal verb, uh, when we use modal verbs, when we use uh, future constructions. Uh, so yeah, and we have an, actually a video here on our channel about uh, sentence brackets and uh, basic German uh, syntax. So take a look at those if you have any questions about the uh, putting things at the end of the sentence and having a verb in the second position. So uh, how do we form the past participle of, of German verbs? And there's, I guess, several different ways to do it depending on what type of verb you're dealing with. So we have a, a weak, common, run-of-the-mill weak verb, machen. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take the en ending off, we're going to remove the infinitive ending to give us the verb stem mach. Now, in front of this, we're going to add a GE prefix, gemach. Now, looking at the end of the verb stem, the CH, mach, um, it does end in a consonant cluster, but the way the CH is spoken, it's the end of this, it's at the back of your mouth, and uh, moving, well, what we're going to have to do here is we're going to have to add a T ending. Um, and this is pronounceable, so gemacht. We're moving from the ch at the end, at the back of your mouth, towards the t, which is pronounced at the front of your mouth, so gemacht. And uh, this is easily pronounced, and therefore we don't have to do anything else to the stem besides add the ge prefix and, and the t ending. This isn't the case when we deal with a verb that ends in a t, a d, or specific consonant clusters like the gn in regnen or uh, to rain as we see on the screen. We do the same essential thing. We're going to drop off the en ending, regen, uh, and then we're going to add the ge prefix to it. However, the problem presents itself here. It's essentially one of pronunciation. We're going to have to add a T, but it's difficult to pronounce because the N in the consonant cluster, GN, is spoken at the front of your mouth. And that's the same place we're going to say uh, the T. So moving between two uh, consonants, or two uh, consonants that are at the beginning of your mouth, or just at the front of your mouth, is just difficult to do in German. So to make this a bit easier, what German does is in situations like this where the, the stem ends in a T, a D, or a, a specific consonant cluster, we're going to add an ET to it. So we get the very pronounceable um, net. Now finally, uh, we have some verbs, weak verbs that end in ihren, like diskutieren, to discuss. Um, again, we do the same, we start off in the same way. We remove the infinitive ending. However, we're going to diverge slightly by we're at this point, we're not going to add a GE prefix to it. So, uh, but what, what instead we'll do is we'll skip over this step, not add a GE prefix, and we're simply going to add a T ending. So we get the past participle diskutiert. Now, finally, the question is, uh, when do I use the uh, a helping verb of sein and when do I use a helping verb uh, haben? So sort of a rule of thumb to keep in mind is that uh, generally if a verb shows motion, for example like the sentence you see on the screen or the past participle shows motion, like you see on the screen here, ich bin im Auto gefahren, I drove in the car. Um, I'm moving from point A to point B. I get in the car, I turn the engine on, I uh, go from point A to point B. There's motion between those points. Therefore I'm going to have to use some form of sein as the helping verb. Then again, um, if, it, if the participle shows some change of condition, uh, ich bin Polizist geworden, I became a police officer. Um, I was uh, a student one day and I went to school, I learned how to become a police officer, and when I graduate I became a police officer. I went from being a student to a police officer. That shows some ch change in condition. And that change again is going to, you're going to have to use uh, a form of the helping verb, a form of the verb sein as, as a helping verb. Now otherwise, 
if it, if the past participle just shows some type of complete completed action, like the one you see on the screen here, ich habe sie gesehen, I saw her, um, or I saw them. Um, it, there's no motion, there's no change involved. Generally, with those, we simply have to use um, some form of the verb haben as, as a helping verb. There are, of course, a few exceptions to this rule. Um, and those are some of the here that you see on the screen. Um, if I use a past participle, if I use a present perfect tense construction with sein, uh, the past participle of sein, um, I'm going to have to use a, a, another, f I have to use a, some form of the verb sein as the helping verb. Or if I use the uh, bleiben, um, which shows simply to stay, there is no, there is no changing condition, there is no motion from point A to point B. Um, I just stay in one spot and don't change. Nevertheless, I still use a form of sein as a as a helping verb. Uh, Finally, the verb passieren to to occur to or to happen to, uh, I suppose you sort of sort of imply some type of change that uh, one instance, you know, one moment everything's fine, and next moment something happens to me. Um, this would you would have to use some form of the verb uh, sein as a helping verb when forming the past or the present perfect tense uh, using uh, using this verb. So anyway, that's essentially a brief overview of the present perfect tense in, in German. In other videos, we'll take a look at uh, how we use irregular and strong verbs uh, to form this construction. This is the present perfect tense.